Right, welcome Joss to the 10th or something Royal Chat. Um, good to have you with us. Thank you. Um, so now we're just going to talk through sort of how the RR season's been going so far, a few questions on you, a few questions from the fans, um, to delve a little deeper into the mind of Joss Butler. Um, so to start off, um, this is your second season with the Royals, how much do you enjoy sort of being part of the franchise? Yeah, I've uh, loved being part of the franchise. Um, I think it's got a great feel about um, the franchise. I think all the guys get on really well. It's it's well led and um, a really nice, relaxed atmosphere. Which is, um, you know, as a <clears throat> international player to come into it, that kind of atmosphere really helps you settle and, and feel at home and and um, I feel perform well as well. So uh, it's a really exciting squad to be a part of. Pretty uh, young squad as well, with lots of talent. Um, which is really exciting, um, and yeah, obviously we got our first win the other day, so hopefully we can get on a roll from there. And obviously you had an amazing season last year with the Royals hitting sort of 550s in a row towards the end of the season, and then that carried you through to an awesome year with England as well. How how great has last year been for you in general? Yeah, it's been an amazing year. Um, obviously kick-started um, here at the IPL last year, so um, you know, took lots of confidence from from that. The IPL has always been a tournament I've really wanted to do, do well in um, and showcase. Um, you know what I could do, and I think you know the back end of the tournament I sort of really got to that and that sort of consistent place. And and I think it took so much confidence from, you know, for me it's the biggest tournament in the world and all the best players are here playing against each other. So um, that gave me loads of confidence to continue that uh, into the summer with England. Mm. And the and with the IPL you play on a lot of different wickets. Does that sort of help you prepare for, for all sorts of conditions? Because whether it's north, south, east, west, it's completely you could be playing on a turning track one week, a fast track the next. That sort of helps helps you. Yeah, it does. Um, I think that's one of the challenges of international cricket as well. You know, being able to go to different countries and perform, um, you know, under pressure in, in different conditions. But generally, an international tour like you said, it's, it's longer and you get used to conditions in the first week and they're pretty similar throughout. Um, but yeah, here in India, you know, the wickets can be really different, um, you know, day by day. And I think that's uh, another challenge, which is, is um, you know, for the players to try and make sure you can perform in all those conditions. So it's, it's a fantastic um, development uh, and learning uh, for yourself as a player here as well. And now going back to your sort of earlier days, how did you choose cricket as your, your sport? Uh, I sort of fell into cricket really by, um, you know, my brother played cricket and uh, he's about, he's seven years older than me so I used to just go along and watch him uh, play and, you know, we want to emulate him on the side and, um, you know, we had a, you know, we'd play at home in the garden and, and stuff like that so that's really how I got into it and Somerset um, was about the cricket ground was about half an hour, 45 minutes from where we lived, so we used to go and watch quite a bit of cricket down there, and um, yeah, that's how I sort of got into playing. And you, you fancy yourself as a bit of a footballer as well, you know, pre-match, I was talking to some of your sort of England teammates and coaches, um, you had a little auction, I think, for some of the England boys um, during the season, how did you how did you get on in that in that auction away from the IPL? <laughs> yeah, I think I was yeah, obviously the highest paid player in the auction. <laughs> <laughs> I think generally as well, I think I pride myself on, on wanting it the most as well. I think some of the other guys sort of realise they're there to play cricket as well and don't take it that seriously. But yeah, definitely the biggest part of my day is the, <laughs> is the football warm up. And if we lose, then um, yeah, I may as well not bother with the rest of the day if it hurts me that much. But yeah, so I definitely fancy myself in terms of commitment levels to, to the football. Mm. Um, moving, moving back to cricket now. Um, who's the who's the one sort of wicketkeeper batsman you you idolised or have idolised? Um, I'd say early on it was probably Adam Gilchrist. Um, I thought he sort of changed the whole role as you know as wicketkeepers suddenly being able to play in that explosive manner at the top of the order in one day cricket and and coming in at number seven in Test matches. Um, he sort of you know proved that you could be a fantastic batter and a brilliant wicketkeeper as well. Uh, so initially he was uh, an idol of mine, uh, and then I'd say, you know, uh, as soon as Emma Stoney came on the scene, he was a big idol of mine. I love the way he goes about it and looks so calm and relaxed and always in control. Um, I really like his style of wicket keeping as well. Um, he just so natural, really fast hands, um, just gets the job done and um, has that 
sort of real instinct for wicket keeping, which um, I don't really think you can teach. And a lot of people say, you know, how important wicket keeping is from a sort of leadership and strategy perspective on the field. How how much do you sort of learn from the likes of Dhoni on that? You can see how he sort of slows the game down, really controls every aspect of it, and you sort of do that role for us. How much do you, do you talk to him about it? And uh, no, I was lucky enough last year um, to have a bit of a chat with him, but I was asking him more about sort of the technical side in practice, and he's saying he doesn't practice. So, <laughs> so that wasn't, yeah, I didn't get too, too, helpful. too much from that. But uh, I think the best thing about it was to, he told me how much he, to try and enjoy it. And he sees wicket keeping as fun, and um, you know, he's in the game, he's trying to affect the game and take wickets, um, you know, with stumpings and catches. And, and sometimes you sort of, well, personally, you sort of forget yeah. that, that it's, it's a really fun place to be. Um, but yeah, obviously, and from a leadership point of view, you've got to find you know, the best view in the house to see uh, what's going on. You can see you know, from how a wicket's uh, behaving, what certain batters are trying to do, and, and the angles in the field as well. So um, you know, I think it, a lot falls on you as a, a wicket keeper to try and assist the captain and the bowlers with your pair of eyes from behind the stumps. And with, you know, I was speaking to, to Shreyas the other day and he talked about how important your little conversations are on the pitch. He obviously had an amazing game last match. How, how enjoyable was that to sort of watch from behind the stumps? Yeah, it's awesome to see him bowl so well. Um, I've actually, every IPL I've been to, I've, I've been in the same team as Shreyas. So yeah. got to know him pretty well a couple of seasons at Mumbai and now obviously two seasons here. Um, and I think his, you know, the talent he's got is really showing through. So uh, delighted for him. Um, and I think he can go on from strength to strength. Absolutely. Um, who is your favourite sports person outside of cricket? Um, better few. I'd say uh, Roger Federer is a big one. Um, I think yeah. that's been 100% of the answer. Yeah. So I, I think his, you know, his obviously is an amazing tennis player, but I think the way he plays, the style he's got, I think is... It's awesome. Um, I like the way he carries himself. It's, I think he's an incredible role model for, um, you know, sports people inside and outside of tennis. Um, so yeah, big Roger Federer fan. Um, I love Lionel Messi as well. I think he's, um, yeah, just the way he plays football is awesome. So um, yeah, I enjoy watching him. I enjoy the way he sort of goes about it as well. It's not doesn't seem as too fussed by all the stuff that goes on around. He just wants to play football. So does that mean you're a Barcelona fan or? Really? Yeah, I've got a few football teams that I support. <laughs> a bit <laughs> uh, of a glory supporter. Yeah, well, you could say that. I just appreciate good football. Um, yeah, but I was a Blackburn Rovers fan really back in the day. But as a really, Alan same as Louis. Yeah, Alan Shearer fan really okay. when they won the league. So um, yeah, but they sort of uh, fallen away a bit. So. Yeah, uh, might claim Manchester City. Yeah, when I moved to Lancashire. <laughs> yeah, when I moved, there, I had to choose between Man U or Man City, and obviously. Since so you were winning at the yes. time, so. Yeah, and my agent Neil Fairbrother supports Man U, so I thought I'll go for City, and because they're going to win, so I can give them a bit for that. Um, do you have any pre-game rituals? What What do you do on match day? Um, match day. I think here in India, because the games don't start till really late. Um, I actually like to go to the gym and go for a swim and try and get moving a bit. Find, um, you know, otherwise, to just sort of feel tired all day yeah. and not, you know, so try and get up and about and get moving. Um, um, apart from that, not, not too much, pretty, pretty quiet. Um, sort of try and do a little bit of planning as such and, you know, by myself and a bit of sort of mindfulness kind of stuff. Sort of, you know, visualization of what I think might happen in the game and the situations that could be in. Um, but yeah, pretty relaxed before the game. Music on the bus right there? Uh, yeah, music. Or this year, I've been sat next to Shreya, so we've been okay. chatting about all sorts of things. Um, but yeah, someone's usually playing some. You know, got that tiki taco song on repeat. <laughs> so uh, yeah, probably know every word to that one now. <laughs> and um, have you picked up any interesting sledges from? Indians in our uh, the ones that can be said on camera. Obviously. None that can be said on camera, yeah. I don't think. But um, I'm learning a little bit of Hindi through my few TV shows yeah. I've been doing. Um, yeah, I've got to work on that though. What was your line from last year? Um, uh, Arriba, IPL Malak. <laughs> I still can't remember what <laughs> <I mean. laughs> um, What was the first thing you did back in back last season when you got picked for the Royals? Obviously, Mumbai, you could have been retained by them. 
we then picked you up. Yeah. Is there a bit of mixed emotions or? Uh, a little bit, I think, because um, I really enjoyed my time with Mumbai. It was like my first IPL franchise. Um, it's an amazing opportunity to be picked by them and, and play for them uh, in the IPL, and I really loved my time there. So, um, you know, I was sort of thinking maybe I might go back there, but not sure. But then, you know, a lot of excitement again to be, you know, a new challenge, um, a new setup. Um, ben Stokes was obviously picked by the Royals as well, so I was really excited about that to be, to be playing with him. Um, yeah, so lots of, you know, excitement really to, for I think new opportunities and you know, new beginnings as such to give you lots of chance to learn and grow. And another great opportunity to come and play in the IPL. And we're very happy with the with the decision after, after two year or year and a half of performances. Um, what is your best moment on the cricket field so far? Um, I think it'd have to be, I guess, winning the Ashes. I think, I think the moment um, that Mark Wood took that final wicket at Trent Bridge, I think that sort of ten seconds of euphoria yeah. is just uh, incredible. You know, I had a you know, poor series personally, but um, you know, it's great to just be involved in a winning you know, Ashes series. Um, some awesome performances throughout from some of the guys. It's that game. You know, Stuart Broad took eight for fifteen oh, as well, which was just yeah amazing. And I think just I got you know don't have too many pictures of cricket at home actually, but the one picture of them there's a great picture of Woody taking that wicket and you know just everyone's celebration. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that ten seconds is just amazing. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, okay, a little bit different one. This one. What are your obviously in a few years time? What do you look at as your post retirement plans? Um, I'm not sure. I, I love sport. I love all sports. So, you know, I think um, I'd love to still be involved in, in sport in some capacity. Um, you know, I'm not sure if coaching's my kind of. I'm not technically don't really know that much about cricket. I don't think. <laughs> judging by the way um, you know, I hear some people talk about technique, but I, yeah, but um, there's something about sport. Yeah, whether it be involved in a sports company or. Um, you know, I quite like talking about the game. Um, yeah, so sort of some form of coaching, I think. Like, um, but uh, yeah, I don't really know. Not something you need to stress no, about for a, for a few not. years. <laughs> um, we've asked the, some of the boys this in terms of social media. Who do you think's the best and worst in in the Royals on social media? Best and worst. Um, Who's the most vain? Most vain. I, I, once I say the name, you'll. You all laugh, but oh, Yagi is the. Oh, yeah. Yagi, yeah, Yagi's pretty. Yeah, he's pretty active, isn't yeah. he, on social media? Um, yeah, I think didn't his Instagram live go on for about half an hour and a half <laughs> as well? So, uh, yeah, Yagi's probably. Yeah, he fancies himself, doesn't he? Um, There's still that video from whenever he was back playing. Like, what was the favourite part of you? And he's like, <laughs> my face. It's not too bad, is it? Um, I'm not sure how many players would. We'd go for that. What would be your? What would be the top part of you? The top part of me. Um, don't know. My hands. <laughs> <laughs> Good hands. Good hands. There we go. Um, do you have any fun or funny stories about meeting fans in India or England? Um, not really. Um, but I think the so A B de Villiers is obviously a huge idol of mine. Um, and sort of lucky enough to sort of get to know him a little bit and during my second year with Mumbai, um, I was sort of walking out to the to the middle and he was like, Oh, do you want to catch up for a beer after the game? And I was just like, Oh, this is amazing, like yeah. you know, I can talk to my idol and Louise, my wife, was out at the time. And so I got back to the room and I was like, Look, get changed, we're going straight to the bar, like A B de Villiers has said, Come for a drink, like this is gonna be amazing, like and so I was like, just in the lift, just like, play it cool, just don't <laughs> ask any stupid questions, just be normal. And um, and so we must have been chatting for 15, 20 minutes, so it was, you know, lovely, talking all sorts of cricket, other stuff, it was awesome, it was loving life. And then there's a little bit of a lull in the conversation, and Louise asked him which part of New Zealand he was from. And I just, yeah, that sort of just killed me. That's <laughs> Um, so didn't give yeah. it a briefing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought his accent might have given it away, but um, yeah, so that's pretty embarrassing. But you caught up with him the other night after the RCB game. 
Yeah. Yes, all, all yes. forgotten. <laughs> all forgotten. Yeah. I don't want to remind him of that one. Um, how do you how do you sort of de-stress for between games, especially when you have a match, a flight, a match? Like, what's your? Yeah. Um, I think uh, when we've been at home, I've been trying to learn the keyboard. Um, we've got How's that going? Pretty slow progress. <laughs> um, yeah, we've got we're probably not quite ready to start singing live on camera <laughs> like you are. Um, but uh, yeah, I find that like you know, we've got lots of time you know in between you know the games or even on a game day you know you've got lots of time. So I actually quite enjoy trying something new and it's yeah. something I've always wanted to to do and it's been yeah very slow progress but um, it's quite stimulating I guess um, and yeah we've got a great team room here you can go and play pool go and play table tennis um, all sorts of stuff watch a few shows or something yeah, yeah so pretty normal stuff what's your what's been your favorite moment playing for for the Royals um, I think it have to be last year um, like that sort of run of games was awesome, but I think the probably the Chennai win was mm. um, you know one of the, the best moments with the Royals. We obviously got in a position where we sort of needed to win the majority of our games at the end of the season to get in the playoffs, and we we got on a, a good run. And you know I think that Chennai game to any time you sort of win in the last over mm. under under some pressure, um, you know I just remember everyone as well like running out onto the field. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah, they're just great times that. You know, to really bring everyone close together and you know, really meaningful wins that gave us a chance to get in the playoffs. And what a crazy last couple of overs! You got Dhoni dropping you, uh, which I don't think I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. And dropping that, then ball going up, Bravo tripping over, <laughs> then Watson overthrowing. Like it was. Yeah, it was a it was not... crazy game. Um, yeah, I think Joffre was good job. He's got long legs, Joffre. <laughs> Joffre ran right off the pitch, which is that's the best <laughs> batting I've ever done, and he just sprints <laughs> it there and back. Um, but how and how was the atmosphere like in the dressing room afterwards after something like that? Yeah, it's always yeah, it's great. Those sort of the yeah the moments of um, you know always those sort of games when you, you know you've been on both sides of them. It's you know if you lost it, you're absolutely devastated in the change room, and if you won, it's just you know cloud nine. Everyone's yeah. absolutely loving life. So um, yeah, they're great changing rooms to be a part of when you win those close games. Um, what makes our a good team? I think the um, camaraderie between all the lads. I think um, it's not easy to always get that in, in sort of franchise teams when you're together for a short space of time. But I think um, there's a real natural connection between lots of the guys and a really good atmosphere in the team. Um, we've got loads of talent that always helps in yeah. good teams. Um, you know, so I think yeah, that's, that's sort of togetherness is a real strength of the side, and um, and obviously we've got some. Fantastic players. What is your most useless talent? Useless talent? Um, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if it's useless, I probably haven't been used to it. Much, so I don't know. Don't know what it is. Um, I don't have many other golf. Talent. Uh judging by your golf class, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think golf. That's why I don't do it. Yeah, golf's a good talent to try and have. My golf game's pretty average, but. Um, yeah, most of the guys are yeah, pretty keen golfers, especially in the England side, so travelling around um, in between games, there's usually quite a lot of golf played. Um, who is your celebrity crush? Uh, probably Rachel off of Friends. Yeah, sure. yeah. Um, yeah. quite like having <laughs> uh, Comedy Central on repeat yeah. at home. So you, you can honestly be there for hours, isn't it? It's just back yeah. to back. Um, what is your biggest cricket? <laughs> What's your biggest cricket-related pet peeve? Pet peeve. Um, Other than the obvious. <laughs> Man cats. Yeah. Um, uh, I think just blokes when they're just carrying, like you knowing guys are batting really well, and they're obviously batting well, but then they just start carrying on even more. I think that just really annoyed this like because you obviously as an opposition player you're frustrated because they're playing well yeah. and then they just start carrying on sort of asking for a drink every two minutes because they've been back you know yeah. sort of got uh, back for a while so it's what people do and all that but you just yeah when people start carrying on a bit too much it sort of annoys me but yeah hopefully <laughs> hopefully I don't do the same but 
<laughs> yeah, no, I don't see see you going for too many too many yeah. tricks later on. Um, we better t- touch on the whole man tennis a very briefly. But how you know, sort of three games gone past back by now is it sort of just forgotten and and moved on from? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think actually initially I found it quite hard <laughs> at the time. I was sort of obviously really disappointed and frustrated. Um, and but I think actually in the next couple of games, actually quite strange sort of going out there to bat and actually instead of focusing on watching the ball, I was more focused on the ball on ball actually, ball. yeah, like my backing up technique. So um, that was a bit strange and sort of had to sort of, you know, sort of have a word with myself really and say, yeah. right, get a grip um, and just get over it. So yeah, it's all done now and it's you know, just one of those things that hopefully will never happen again. Absolutely. Um, do you have any advice for, for young cricketers out there? Um, I think you know the enjoyment factor is one um, I always think of. I think you play your best cricket when you're enjoying it. So whether you know if you enjoy bowling leg spin, bowl leg spin all the time. If you enjoy whacking it, try and whack it. If you enjoy staying in, like, so making sure you keep that enjoyment factor. I think um, also trying not to specialise in one skill, especially you know looking at the way cricket sort of gone now. The advent of T Twenty and and sort of franchise cricket especially if you're looking for value in a player you're probably looking for a guy who who does more than just one yeah. thing so I'd try and say to young cricketers make sure you you know if you don't you know even if you don't really bowl try and bowl something you know there's yeah. always going to be a place if if you can you know bowl an over here or there you're quite attractive to to your team so making sure you try and, and do as much as you can um, you know with your talent and um, you know give it your best shot I think we've seen Tripathi doing about that a bit through the off season. He's captaining Maharashtra, so he's getting in a good ten overs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. We've now got a few questions from the fans. Um, who is the one team you'd like to score a century against in the IPL? That's from Yash Nahar. Um, all of them, I guess. Yeah. Um, I I think just I'd love to try and score a hundred in the in the IPL. I think you know, last year. Um, you know, we got close a couple got of times, times, yeah. So uh, that was nice, but of course, you know, don't really try and go out there and play for personal yeah. um, things. You want to try and win games for the team, but um, yeah, to I've never scored a hundred in a T Twenty match, so um, yeah, I'd love to try and get one. Because that game against Mumbai when you hit ninety five or ninety six, Sanji came in and hit a quick twenty off about six yeah, more. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, that's <laughs> good. Like, that's you know. As much as it's nice to try and get those personal accolades, you just you just want to win and and get there for the team. Yeah. Um, next one, the player you love to have in the dressing room. This is from an untold voyage. In our squad now. Yeah. Um, actually, I love having Sanju in the dressing room. Um, you know, the majority of the time he's quite a quiet guy, but he's actually very funny when he uh, gets going. He's obviously a brilliant player. I love his style of batting. I love watching him. In fact, that hundred he got the other, you know oh, Hyderabad is an, an amazing to watch, and I think, you know, I even sort of really remember some of the early IPL games I used to watch on TV at home with my dad. Sanju was always my, one of my dad's favourite mm-hmm. players. Actually, as a, you know, I think he st- must have started when he was eighteen or yeah, so. Yeah. yeah. So, and um, yeah, so my dad was always a Sanju Samson fan, so <laughs> I've always kept an eye out for Sanju. Fantastic. Um, Joel Johnson asked you what your favourite moment was, but we've already touched on that. Um, Arvind1025, tell us the mood in the dressing room after we win or lose a game. Um, I think one of the strengths of the side is actually it's, it's pretty consistent mood. Obviously, you, you know, you're happier when you win, yeah. um, but you know, the guys don't seem to get too down when you, when you lose games. Um, they're pretty philosophical about uh, winning and losing. Um, I think we try and keep it. Um, you know, don't try and ride too much of a roller coaster of emotions. Um, personally, I try not to do that too much because I think um, it helps me to be consistent. You know, if we do win, it's gone, and you want to try and win another one. And if you lose, it's just next game's an opportunity to win. So, um, you know, the dressing room's pretty good. Obviously, you've got like Paddy in charge. He's quite um, you know, a calm guy and you know, thinks you know, a lot about what he's going to say to the team. So it's yeah, it's a pretty relaxed, um, calm atmosphere, whether we win or lose. Awesome. Um, M. Vibanshu has said, um, 
How about breaking Bairstow's record of highest score this season? Yeah, that would be nice, wouldn't <laughs> it? <laughs> yeah, um, no, it's great to see Johnny playing so well. He's um, you know, come in and just hit the ground running straight away for, for uh, Hyderabad. And, you know, obviously, we don't want him to play well against the Royals. Or, um, but, uh, yeah, you know, fantastic innings he played against RCB. And, um, yeah, his is now, for everyone else in the tournament, the score to beat. And what do you think about him and him and um, Warner in the middle having that that big hug, which has now been shared everywhere? Ashes in the summer. How different is it going to be? Going to be there? Yeah. So I think that's you know that's the beauty of the IPL, isn't it? It throws up um, situations like that, which you would never find anywhere else in the world. Um, you know, for guys to be be playing together. Um, you know, like we've got obviously Steve Smith in our team, and I'm sure when Stokes has got the ball in hand and he's bowling at Smith and in the summer he'll be charging in and trying to get him out and um, yeah I think you know, that's just one of the beauty of the IPL that you know you'll play against guys who you sort of feel like you really dislike um, and then you actually get in a team with them and go actually a pretty good fellow and yeah. you know, you know tend, end up being good mates. Mm, absolutely. Um, England Reloaded have asked what's the baby's name going to be? Uh, it has to stay a secret I think everyone tells me it's bad luck if you um, yeah, I think if it's a boy, we're pretty set on a name, but if okay. it's a girl, it's an absolute lottery. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nitesh has asked, who's the toughest bowler you faced? Oh, I have to say Rashid Khan, I? I think every other bowler gets me out. So, um, yeah, Rashid Khan's a yeah, he's a brilliant bowler. He's been you know one of the probably the best T20 bowler for the last couple of years. Um, you know, he's got great disguise and and great control. Um, so. Yeah, I find him very hard work. I think most people, most people do. Um, An Anakit Katra has asked, which one is the more dangerous, England winter or Indian summer? Um, don't know really. Quite, I'm, I actually quite like my English winters. Um, I quite like it being, um, you know, going to the pub where it's nice and cold outside and fires on in the pub yeah. roast dinner on a Sunday is pretty nice, but. Luckily as well, I think with cricketers we get to chase the sun around quite a lot and um, yeah, I think it can get pretty hot in Jaipur <laughs> as I'm sure it's starting to just heat up now. Absolutely. Um, Path has asked, who's your best friend from India? My best friend, I have to say Shreyas at the minute. We sat next to each other on the bus, obviously played with him for, for, yeah. for four years. So um, yeah, Shreyas is my man. Good, good lad, Shreyas. Um, Laksh, <laughs> Laksh has asked, why do you always seem so serious? Um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I think maybe I've just got a resting brown face. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know. Hopefully, I'm not too more, serious. More fun behind closed doors. So, yeah. Um, Subod Agawal has asked, what's your favourite shot to play? My favourite shot uh, would be the scoop shot. Yeah, I think that's always been a favourite of mine for a few years now, so um, any time that comes off is a, yeah, it's a good feeling. Um, Aditi0809, do you, follow, do you follow any superstitions apart from that message on your bat? Um, not really superstition. I think if you sort of get into that, you can sort of you know, kid yourself that, yeah, you sort of need something to happen to yeah. be able to perform. I think that's one thing. Um, but yeah, try not to have too many superstitions because it makes you feel like you rely on something that, you know, actually doesn't make any difference. Absolutely. So we've got, it's challenge, challenge time now. So table tennis, bat and ball, you just got to keep you up. So I'll ask you 10 quick fire questions and see how many you can answer before it falls off the bat. Okay. No one has yet let it drop off the bat, so no pressure. I'm good at ping pong as well. Yeah. Uh, dogs or cats? Dogs. Winter or summer? Summer. Offside or leg size? Leg size. Favourite bowler to bat against? Um, Moeen Ali. <laughs> Favourite ground in England? The Oval. Favourite sport to watch other than cricket? Football. Favourite goal you've watched in football? Um, Lionel Messi against Bayern Munich when he made Boateng fall over and then chipped Neuer. Nothing about England in the World Cup in the summer? 
Uh, Eric Dyer's penalty. <laughs> How were the celebrations where you were? Um, yeah, awesome. Um, I actually loved, yeah, the World Cup was amazing, wasn't it? So we, we watched the penalties at Old Trafford in the changing room. Awesome, I'm going to give you a 10 out of 10 for that. Oi! Oh! oh. Alright, we got a bit of flair there. Um, well done. You didn't take any further. Um, finally, we just got a few f- questions from the fans who were watching live, of which I'm sure there were thousands. Millions, I um, <laughs> um, Debashish Mana has asked, how do you manage to play such innovative shots? Um, practice. Um, I think that's one of the big things people forget. Uh, now so I think T20 has just made sort of a reverse sweep a normal shot um, stuff like that I think it's also one of my favourite bits about cricket is actually being in the nets with no consequences and and practicing trying things when it, you know you can it can come off and it, it or if it doesn't it doesn't matter so um, yeah sometimes it's not always the fun in the middle it's yeah, enjoying your practice and trying things in practice. Um, Mayank Patak has has linked. To this question but he says do you practice the reverse sweep sweep and scoop in the nets yeah I practice them all the time um probably just as much as a forward defense <laughs> um will we see any more of these in the tests in the summer um uh, reverse sweeps yeah i can yeah. say that any scoops pretty, yeah scoop shot probably not i think um, <laughs> don't quite see the value in it just yet um nitin has asked what are the comparisons and differences between the big bash and the ipl um, I think they're both great tournaments. I think it's really hard to look past the magnitude of cricket though in India. Um, obviously, in Australia, it's a you know, huge summer sport, and uh, especially around Christmas time, it's in- incredibly popular. But um, no, cricket's just on another level in India. It's uh, um, really hard to comprehend it unless you've sort yeah. of been out here. Um, but I just don't think anywhere can or any tournament can rival the the reach of the IPL. Um, and another question, how much are you looking forward to firstly the rest of this tournament and then the World Cup and, and actually in the summer? Yeah, obviously really excited for the rest of the tournament. Um, you know, determined to, to go all the way and get first step is to, to get into those playoffs. So we need to play some good cricket to, to get into that. Um, obviously it's a huge summer ahead for England. I think also a really exciting time just for English cricket as a whole. There's nothing else really going on that will be um, you know, overshadowing cricket as well. So for the World Cup and the Ashes, we're lucky to be around at the right time for, yeah. for that to happen all in all in one summer as well. So um, yeah, but trying to leave it in the in the future at the minute um, and try and uh, concentrate on winning some games here. Perfect. All right, that's it from the Royal Chat with with Josh today. Um, do let us know who you want next on on for the Royal Chat, and hope you enjoyed the the chat today.